Hello and welcome. Well, winter is a wonderful time to rest, recharge and rejuvenate with comfort food that can keep us warm and snug. And Mother Earth has an incredible ability to supply us with seasonal produce that contains the very nutrients our bodies need to consume for optimum health for that particular time of year. So for as long as humanity has been in existence, we have been resourceful with what food options that we have available and are in season. But I guess recently, of course, in recent years, due to technological advances, we've had the luxury of eating summer fruits all year round. This, however, I guess can come with some disadvantages, including making our digestive system having to work overtime. So today, to help understand the benefits of eating seasonally, we welcome back Siobhan Boyle, CEO of Jamie Oliver's Ministry of Food, who Kittypedia is honoured to be in partnership with. And Siobhan is going to share great tips for how we can make the most out of our winter produce. Thank you for joining us today and welcome back. How are you doing? I'm really good, Rachel. How are you? Lovely to be back um, on this beautiful sunny winter's day from Sydney. Yes, and we were just saying offline how sort of um, sort of dreary. We've got concrete sky down here in Melbourne at the moment, as I, as I call it, when we've got that grey sky, concrete sky. So enjoy the sunshine. You can see it's beautiful just coming through your window there. So you can enjoy that for us. <laughs> and um, talking about sort of winter and summer and all that sort of stuff, I guess we know we all know and love our summer fruits and veggies and mangoes, pineapples, blueberries. Um, but there, I guess, are uh, like consider considerable disadvantages to eating foods um, out of season um, and in produce. So in your view, I'd love to know initially, why do you think eating seasonally is so important for us? Well, not only is um, eating seasonally exciting because um, you get a variety through the year um, of different flavors and um, yeah. food tastes better when they're in season. So if you eat um, berries during summer, they're going to taste more delicious than eating berries that have been sort of grown in a greenhouse and haven't had the benefit of that sunshine and all the nutrients you get through the different seasons. It also means you can eat a variety through the year. And um, not only that, um, the, um, from an economic perspective, um, it means that the foods are going to be much more reasonably priced as well. So if you're eating foods in season and they're not going to just taste better, but they're also going to be better on your wallet. So it's a win-win all round. And it means that your repertoire can increase too. So the things that you're cooking vary throughout the year to reflect what's happening with the temperature outside. It feels a little ironic having this conversation when I've got the sun beaming in um, <laughs> to my apartment today, um, talking about winter ingredients. Um, but you know, you, there are so many beautiful winter ingredients out there. And I think people sort of get stuck in a little bit of a rut. Um, we're thinking just about comfort eating and things to sort of fill them up. And you know, you go into that sort of hunkering down mode, don't you, when you yeah. are in winter. And which is fantastic. And there are wonderful dishes that you can cook. Um, but also there are the citrus which is one of those flavors that comes into season and is in abundance right now. Um, so you can have, you know, those hits of freshness throughout those, um, those beautiful dishes that you're making and those slow cooked dishes, so finishing dishes off to give them that vibrancy and that, that flavor um, that you might not necessarily associate with winter cooking. So it's really exciting. It's a great time to try different ingredients, um, a great time to try those beautiful different vegetables. Um, the controversial vegetables, like Brussels sprouts and cauliflower, which people seem to love or hate. Yes. And, and, and in Australia, beetroot. Beetroots are, you know, um, classically Australian, I feel. Um, you know, you can't go get a burger without a beetroot in yeah. Australia. <laughs> a pineapple with it too. Pineapple and yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I guess, uh, oh, so you keep, keep going, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, and then, you know, sort of, the, the, I would say the more humble uh, um, fruits available, like your apples and your pears, which you know are a lunchbox staples, and you know appearing on cheese boards, but also great for if you're wanting to make a fruit-based dessert like a beautiful apple crumble or a pear lime and ginger crumble, something <laughs> which can be a bit comforting. But you know, we know that treats 
and making desserts are all part of um, your diet, but it's all everything in moderation. But if you're making something with seasonal fruits, um, it's always going to be a little bit better for you than, um, you know, something chocolatey and cream based. So, you know, yes. we're not actually treats as a foundation, <laughs> or, and, and, um, definitely not. Um, but we know that it is all about moderation and, you know, making the best of what you can and knowing when to sort of rein things in as well. Yeah. And, and, and so I guess eating winter produce um, adds, a, adds protection from colds and flus and many types of win, winter produce um, are a great source of vitamin C, A, um, things like leafy veg, vegetables, are also a good source of vitamin K. So all of these things we actually need more so at this time of year. Um, and as you just said, seasonal fruits are fresher and tastier and more nutritious than um, foods that are consumed out of season. Um, but I've also read that eating seasonally can help reduce our carbon footprint. And this is what you were saying a little bit before also that that being that um that we so sort of can lower greenhouse emissions from the transport of our food um of course if we're sort of eating seasonally and more locally so it's beneficial um not just from um an economic perspective but can sort of help to protect local land and wildlife and uh, mass scale agriculture overall so there's so many benefits i'd love to know your thoughts what are your thoughts on that yeah, absolutely. And I think sort of um, as well now, especially in this period of time that we're in where we've all had a bit of a bit of pause on our standard life and we are sort of slowing down the pace of life and we are wanting to know, you know, where our food is coming from and we're wanting to support local because, um, you know, we are seeing the effects that um, COVID-19 has had on communities across Australia and, you know, wanting to support your local farmers and your local growers. And, um, you know, if you aren't, if you in lockdown and you are lucky enough to have your gorgeous farmers markets and your local greengrocers, you know, getting in there, getting to know them, finding out what's good, what's local and what's in season and, you know, having, and, and maybe sort of trying different recipes out Great as well. idea. Um, you know, and so, you know, if you, if you're not, if you normally use um, spinach, why don't you try some kale or some silver bead um, instead, you know, just to mix it up a bit to see whether those different flavor profiles um, work for you and your family. So it is, you know, a time that, you know, there are beautiful ingredients that really do sort of complement um, their brothers and sisters. Um, and, you know, you can kind of have a bit of a play um, and, and see where that journey takes you. And um, eating seasonally can also help reduce exposure to preservatives, I guess, because we're eating more fresh, fresh right, produce. What are your thoughts on that? I would say that's probably um, a little bit of a bold statement in terms of um, the preservative side of things, because yeah. um, um, especially um, in the organic world in Australia, it's not as clear um, as it would be in the UK. Um, the rules um, around organic food are not as hard and fast here. So in terms of um, the preservatives and, and um, ingredients that are put onto your fresh fruit and vegetables, um, when they're growing, um, they can be, you know, you cannot guarantee, you know, what things have been grown in unless you know directly where they've been grown from. But in terms of, you know, if you're buying things in packages um, and, you know, they're canned or they've been frozen or they've had to have things do them to prolong their shelf life, then yes, if you are buying sort of something freeze dried, you know, that there's been a process to get it there. And if it's you know, in a jar or a can, you know, that likewise, you know, things will have had to be added to it to enable that shelf life of the product to last for longer. But um, in in terms of you know buying seasonally in terms of the preservatives i would say that's a little bit of a tricky one because um <laughs> we don't know quite how they've been grown and you could get you know your potatoes fresh out of the ground but the farmer may have put something um onto the land anyway so um probably sort of in in a sense of you know we say fresh is best if you can and you know like like with buying any ingredients whether it's fruit and vegetables whether it's meat whether it's fish if you know your supplies you know where things come from you can start those conversations and you think um, give yourself a bit more knowledge um, about what you're eating for yourself and for your family. Great advice. And um, Siobhan, is it true that produce that goes, um, uh, I guess, that is sort of picked um, and uh, undergoes an early picking, cooling, and heating sort of system as well um, when things when we eat things out of season? Um, and does does that sort of system also um, reduce the flavour of the fruit and vegetables that are picked out of season? 
as well. You do, you do tend to get a different flavour. Um, I don't know whether you've noticed with tomatoes, when you eat tomatoes during winter, they are flavourless. And when, you come, when they're coming into season, there's nothing quite like the smell of fresh, a ripe fresh. tomatoes. There and, is a different and, smell to it. Like, even when you buy it off the vine, and I sometimes will just stand in, at the fruit shop or in the supermarket and just smell, have that smell of the, um, the, 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 the um, tomato off the vine. Is that what you're talking about? Just yeah. That. And, I, and it's something we, when we're teaching our kids program, um, we will often try and get plants, tomato plants, into the classrooms. Yeah. And we'll get the children rubbing the leaves so that they get to smell what a tomato should smell <laughs> like. And it, it really, it, it, if it smells like that, <laughs> And you know it's going to taste delicious. And it's the same with when stone fruit are in season in summer. Um, it, that takes me back to the markets in Europe and, you know, the, the smells of those peaches and nectarines, which are so fantastic. And right now, you've got all the citrus fruit, which is in season and it's abundant. And you know, everywhere you go, you've got hip pockets of yellow and green and orange with your piles of mandarins. And, oh, so, yes. you know, and, and those smells are fabulous it's nothing quite i love the, the freshness of citrus and that zing that it adds to dishes um and so you know that is that is where we want to be going right now with with our with our flavors and our fruits and vegetables yeah i, I i've got a, a very distinct memory um i um my, my friend my background is italian but um we, we never spoke it um at home so i'm not fluent in, in 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 italian by any means but i was in italy with my grandmother many many years ago and standing over her beautiful big bush of um basil and the only thing that we could actually um, communicate over was just the smell of the basil we're picking the leaves and smelling and all oh, we're just saying to one another isn't this beautiful beautiful it was just a, a incredible memory and I, I don't know where that just why, why that just popped up but it is it's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to share those moments with your family with fresh food and produce it definitely sort of anchors down to some beautiful emotional <laughs> sort of memories and that sort of stuff I think with all families and children sitting around family uh you know dinner the tables all that sort of stuff but I guess what we're, we're trying to say overall I guess that fruit and vegetables um, that are in season spend um, less time from farm to table and I guess they do maintain much of that nutrition and flavor so is, is that what you're sort of saying? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that's why seasonality is really exciting. And you know, yeah. some of the simplest dishes you can make um, can actually be the best dishes. And, yes. um, yep. You know, things don't need to be overly complex um, to make something super, super delicious. And, you know, it's, you've got, I, I love making soups during winter. I don't know about you. Um, you know, you've got, you know, nothing like a carrot and coconut and ginger soup or, you know, a, a beautiful roasted cauliflower soup. You've got all these different gorgeous flavors or a nice warm vegetable salad. You don't have to rule salad out either yeah. in winter. I mean, the possibilities really are endless. And, you know, you've got all of those classic flavor punches from chili and ginger and garlic, which are also great for immune boosting, as we've discussed before. And, you know, they can add sort of that warm, warm nature of these dishes. And, you know, I use a lot of the woody herbs during winter. So I use a lot of rosemary. I use a lot of thyme. I use a lot of bay because they really complement slow cooking dishes like a slow cooked um, beef stew or, um, you know, a, a beautiful curry, um, you know, taking those flavors and or making a lovely ragu, um, you know, for, for, for those of you with a beautiful Italian heritage, you know, and, you know, it just really, those, those herbs survive the cooking process. Um, and so they just add that sort of gentle warmth to your dishes. So yeah, you know, it's, it's really lovely to be, I love the fact that you can vary up those flavor profiles through the year and, you know, it kind of just transports you to where you want to be right I now. <laughs> well, overall, what, what are your, your top winter ingredients then? Oh gosh, now that's, that's a good question. I can't go without citrus. Um, I may seem slightly obsessed, but I always have an abundance of lemons and limes in my kitchen because um, A, they're in season right now, but also I know that again, I add that hint of freshness. So whether I'm sort of finishing off with a bit of zest, squeezing over a bit of li um, lemon juice or lime juice into a dish, I just know it's going to kind of sort of lift that it dish does. up. So I, yeah cannot go without. Um, 
I'm a massive fan of the, the slightly controversial vegetable. So I love cauliflower. Um, you know, I love it roasted. Um, I love it in soups. I love it pureed. I made a beautiful cauliflower puree at the weekend, which was oh, wow. very delicious. Um, <laughs> Brussels sprouts, which again were a childhood. I hated them. I don't know about you during childhood um, because they were always steamed and overcooked, but now roasted or pan fried so they go deliciously golden and crispy. Oh my goodness. Like any Brussels sprout hater will then love Brussels sprouts. And um, then, of course, that makes the difference. Oh gosh, absolutely. But that's like with anything. You yeah. can have the best ingredients in the world, but if you don't know what to do with them, then you can make them the least delicious ingredients yeah. in the world. And, and that is something that, you know, we really are very passionate about is teaching people how to use ingredients. It's all very well knowing what's really good for you and knowing what's in season um, and knowing why we should eat it. But you've got to know how to use those ingredients Otherwise, um, you're going to really struggle. So um, we, you know, we part of the process of our, our cooking journey, whether it's our, the Little East through our Learn Your Fruit and Veg program or the Grown Ups through our Ministry of Food program, we teach them what to do with those ingredients and, and how, to, how to prepare them and how to get the best out of them yeah. um, so they always get the maximum flavour. And also sort of knowing sort of what other flavours will complement them too. So if you know certain herbs will work really well or certain spices will work really well with them. And that's really important too. So that's all part of the cooking journey we take people on um, with our wonderful cooking programmes. Yeah, I am. Um, I've made a, a list also of all the different types of, um, I guess, produce that is in season at the moment. And I guess the following family of vegetables, um, from what I can see, my what I've been sort of learning through my research is as a great source of vitamin C um, and all the good stuff. So I'll just quickly just run through them and uh, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. So now I found out the Asian greens, uh, bok choy and choy summer actually in season in winter, which I found interesting. I would have thought that would have been summer, but you've mentioned broccoli, cabbage, kale, cauliflower, turnips, um, swedes and Brussels sprouts, which you've just mentioned. Um, so any, any of those are your favourites where you've mentioned your, your Brussels sprouts is, is, and cauliflower are your two favourites from that list, would you say? Yeah, no, I do love those. But I, do you know what I also do love? I am English. So, and I do love a good root vegetable. So like a, a um, love parsnips and potatoes and sweet potatoes. Oh my goodness, so delicious. So, um, you know, I, and you can't go wrong with those during winter. And yes, like having, you know, sort of whether that's in a mash or, you know, a beautiful baked potato and parsnip actually makes really delicious soup as well. It's got that um, nutty flavor to it. I love parsnip. Oh, yes. Oh, it's so good. And do you know what parsnip and pear go really well together? In, um, so just as a flavor profile, um, I'm, I'm, I've got a parsnip and pear soup that I used to do, which sounds a bit weird, but it's actually really yummy. Um, so it's just because they've both um, got a, they've got a slightly sweet flavor too. Is so, that a cold know, soup or is that a warm soup? It's a warm soup. Mmm. Well, and then I've got um, a, a list now of dark leafy, uh, leafy greens. Um, and I read that, read that they're a great um, source of vitamin K, which is also a rich source of folate. Um, and for, ch for children in particular, essential for brain development and heart health. So those being kale, spinach, silver beet and parsley as well. Now, parsley, generally, you can sort of get all year round as well. But do you, do you add parsley into a lot of your meals at all? Oh gosh, yeah. No, I I love parsley. It's um um it's it depends on whether you're going for the more refined uh, the the continental parsley or <laughs> it's less refined cousin with the curly leaf parsley. Both are great flavour um, adder. They lovely to finish off a dish with. I mean, also I I'll, I'll make um I like to make pestos and salsa verdes as well um with parsley. So that's always nice, just as a little sort of um, added extra flavour to add in so you can sort of if you're whizzing up parsley with some parmesan and some and some nuts whether that's pine nuts or some almonds and a bit of garlic and olive oil and lemon juice you know great for sort of stirring through pasta adding oh, you know, spooning over spooning over fish or you know serving with some meat um or just simply dressing some vegetables and um, and likewise um, you know i use a lot of parsley and salsa verdes and that's you know sort of making a sort of beautiful sort of green herb sauce with vinegar and 
capers and garlic and olive oil. Um, so, you know, again, great for meat and fish and vegetables. So always they're, they're two really handy little recipes to have just that can kind of lift your dishes, um, yeah. you know, to, and, and that hint of freshness as well, because, you know, I think that sort of perception of winter food can be that it's quite heavy and it's quite brown and dark, but, you know, adding those little bursts of colors with your greens and your herbs and your little salsas on the side makes things, you know, the gives them a, a bit of a, a pop at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've got others on the list include fennel mushrooms. You've mentioned parsnips. We've got potatoes and sweet potatoes, squash and beetroot. And then with our fruits, of course, we've got all of our citrus, which you've just mentioned, the oranges, pears, mandarins, kiwi, grapefruit. So all of these things, um, as I was saying at the, the start of the chat, really um, like Mother Earth and, and nature really put these things uh, available for us in season to be able to help sort of like fight co coughs and colds and with high vitamin C and all that sort of stuff. But I'd love to know from your perspective, how can we make the most out of our winter produce? What are your thoughts? I think in terms of making the most of the winter produce, it's, you know, as it, Buy, buying that, buying the produce when it is in season, um, not being afraid of trying new ingredients and um, learning how to cook and prepare those ingredients. So, you know, it's, as, I, as I said earlier, it's really, if you don't know what to do with it, you might not make the best of it, but you know, sort of um, thinking outside the box sometimes and, you know, trying different, trying different things, but um, you know, easy eating seasonally, so important because packed full of nutrition, um, you know, eat, getting a variety of recipes in there and getting a variety of flavors in there, you know, super, super important um, to keep your the diet interesting as well. Because if you're eating the same things all the time, it can be a bit boring, can't it? So, you know, variety is often the key. And, you know, um, you know sometimes just switching a, a sweet potato for a normal potato might yeah. not seem that dramatic but actually you know it's a totally different profile it takes you off in a totally different direction but you can do such similar things with it um and so you know it, it is those little changes and and bringing those ingredients in um you know so that so that you know, your, yours and your family's diet are kept varied exciting and colorful and something we always say when we're teaching um, whether it's little e's or biggies um about um nutrition and and healthy eating is to eat the rainbow and so during winter it can be a little bit more complex to eat the rainbow because of the the colors the the list that you just gave i mean they're, they're not as bright and vibrant as the colors of say of summer fruits and vegetables um, but it is still possible to get the rainbow in there and you know when you are eating the rainbow and um, the different colors of ingredients contain different nutrients. And so if you're eating only green green vegetables, you'd be limiting yourself from the um from the the benefits of the, the more colourful vegetables. So you can still get some colour in there during winter. You've still got your carrots, you've still got your sweet potatoes, and then you've got all of that, that lovely citrus um, and the beetroot. Who can forget beetroot? So you can get your rainbow, um, but it's important not to forget to do that. And so when you are looking and buying and shopping and looking at what's going onto your plate and what you're eating across the week, um, really important to get that variety in, and um, not only from a flavour profile, but perspective but from a nutrition perspective too and yes. to ensure you are getting that um that portfolio of nutrients into your into your body great advice and i guess now that so many of us are staying home to stay safe um and depending what state and territory that you're in in different levels of, of lockdown but i would i would love to know do you still see this time of year being a great time to get kids in the kitchen uh to learn and to be involved with cooking what are your thoughts Absolutely. I think now, um, I think this year more than ever has um, shown the importance of bringing people together with food. Um, people are focusing more on what they're eating. And we know from um, running our kids program that it's the process of getting the children involved in the cooking process mm -hmm. that actually encourages them to try different, new and different things. You get a lot of resistance sometimes when you present new ingredients to children and they then once you involve them in that process you get them chopping you get them tasting as part of the cooking process and then they 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 actually want to try it and even if they don't like it that's okay 
but it is, you know, getting them involved as part of the process. Um, also, it's going to help you long run. You can instill those really positive habits at a young age. It's going to help. It's Great going to advice. make them. Oh, going to get them eating more things, be willing to try more things, get them in the kitchen, you know, and then it becomes normal. Um, it shouldn't be um, this thing that suddenly people have to learn when they're adults. If, it's, if it becomes as normal as learning to read and write, um, hopefully one day soon we can reverse the trend in diet related disease in Australia. So our, we would love for every single child, every single adult, everybody in Australia to have those back to basics cooking skills so that they can make those better choices for themselves, for their families and for future generations. So for us, getting kids in the kitchen is so, so important. And you know, now people have got their kids at home, people have got that time to do that. And you've got this variety, wonderful variety of ingredients to have a go with. You know, I go and see now is the best time to be doing this. I totally agree with you and agree with everything that you just said and support it. And I'd love to be able to understand then, I mean, there's so many recipes out there and I know that the, that your resource has got um, some listed on, on the net as well for, uh, for families to be able to find, but how would you maybe just boil down to your personal three favorite winter recipes? What would they be? The, the kids would love also that you think that, that, oh, that no, maybe that they can be cooking at home. So, um, in terms of um, kid-friendly kid recipes, um, I would suggest doing a, um, like we, I mean, I'd love to do a, a slow-cooked, a slow cooked beef recipe um, to go through pasta. So in terms of, you know, having a bit of a, a beef ragu, um, so it's a bit of a sort of an extension on your classic bolognese. So, um, you know, you can get, get some beautiful flavors going on in there and you can sneak your, sneak your veggies in too. And so that's a great one sort of for feeding a family. And, you know, you can take that in multiple directions. So, you know, you can make it to go with pasta. You can um, turn it into a shepherd's pie. Um, you can turn it, you know, you can you know, put it through um, on jacket potatoes. You can add a bit of spice to it. So it's kind of having a really good base recipe that, you know, maybe your older kids might want to help you with, um, which I always think is, is a total winner. Um, in terms of other recipes, I can't go past a good crumble, a good winter crumble as well. That's great for getting the kids involved with because rubbing your flour and your sugar um, and your butter together, really great. You can get them hands on, hands in. Um, you can get them helping you peel apples or pears um, and, you know, and you get them weighing and measuring. So that's a great one and also a great way of kind of using up those beautiful um, fruits that are in season and you know it becomes a great family treaty dessert so that I would say you know sort of having something slow cooked a beautiful crumble and and then you know in terms of another winter dish you know I I, I do love a soup now soup can be sort of a little bit sort of tricky with some children but it is a great way of getting um, kids um, you know to eat their vegetables and also because you know, if you if you do something like sort of the pea and ham soup, you've got um, you know, um, what is it, Doctor Zeus who was yes, uh, yes, yeah, of pea course, and ham soup yeah. very famous. So, so you're taking the kids off, you know, in a on a bit of a sort of culinary um, narrative um, with with a with a famous character um, who was who made that soup very famous. And actually, obviously, peas aren't in season, but frozen peas which, you know, I am a massive fan of having a freezer stock full of really good frozen veggies as well, um, a great thing to have. So if you want sort of an instant soup, doing something like that is, is a brilliant recipe to have. And if you can sort of tie it into the kids' um, favourite sort of fairy tales or, or kids' books, um, that's a great way of um, encouraging them to sort of try and taste different fruits and vegetables too. Great advice. Great advice. And I think maybe overall eating um, and having children um, eat by season also opens up, you know, I mean, in the kitchen to exploring countless different recipe options and, and cooking new and different things and, and in exploring different things to do, as you just said, maybe exchanging um, you know, a sweet potato for a normal potato, um, but overall maybe just expanding the children's palate um, and, and getting them used to eating different things. Um, and I guess all, all in all, really getting children excited about food and the many options that are available to them. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think, you know, you've got to, you know, I think there's, there's no, everyone's got different taste preferences. 
not everyone's going to like everything, but getting kids excited, get them experienced, get them exposed to those different ingredients. Um, it, it's only a positive thing. Yes. Um, you know, yeah. it, it really, really is. It's not just from a nutrition perspective. It's not, it, we, we know that, you know, if you're getting kids eating the right ingredients, um, they're having a really good balanced diet from a young age um, that they're going to be um, they're gonna, their concentration is going to be better at school and which especially if you're homeschooling you're going to want that <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> and, and, then, and then you know in terms of their um, po having po um, positive mental health outcomes you know um, over the age of 14 if you're really instilling those positive eating habits from a young age um, it's only going to improve their sort of journey into adulthood. So couldn't agree with you more. It's so important getting kids involved, exposed, and, you know, trying, trying those different ingredients and expanding you know, their palate. Yeah. It might not happen straight away, but it is, you know, trying it in different ways. You know, they might like, not like a carrot raw, but they might find a carrot dip really delicious if you you know if you've roasted your carrots and then blended them up with some chickpeas and some lemon juice olive oil and garlic they might think wow that's really amazing but you've got to try these different things and adding a bit of spice in potentially if they're open to spice to see you know there were, there was more way and more than one way to serve a vegetable so it is and, and you know, working out I think we see this in one of our other chats too, that if, for example, you give them a carrot, like you are just saying, and they don't like a carrot raw, don't rule that out completely. They're never going to eat carrots. It's, it's about, as you are just saying, ex expanding and trying it in different ways so they do still get the, 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 the nutrients from that particular vegetable. Is that what you're saying? It's about yeah, sort of I'm expanding the options to be able to ensure that they actually do eat all fruits and vegetables. Well, not all, but you yeah. know, as many as possible. Yeah, oh, totally. And I know, I know sort of a lot of parents do hide things in, into, um, you know, into your bolognese and, and your, and your sauces. And, um, and, and, you know, I, I've got a girlfriend of mine who makes a very delicious, um, it's delicious for adults too. She, she, um, she calls it it's her special, um, vegetable, um, cheese pasta which basically blending up some cauliflower and corn through through a sort of bechamel sauce but it, it is you know sort of a, a, another great way of kind of sneaking sneaking in those vegetables if your children are um a little bit fussy which which is very normal and you can you can instill the best possible habits there are but then children will still be fussy and every child is different but um yeah it, there there is more than one way to serve a vegetable and i think sort of you know trying out different varieties and then sort of bringing it back as well and not making a big deal out of it because i think that's also something that puts people off if you're told you have to like something often you'll do completely the opposite, the opposite. And we're the same as adults aren't we you know? yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. we're definitely the same as adults we're definitely like oh no i i don't i that doesn't work well with yes me. So, you want me to go this way i'm going to go this way exactly exactly <laughs> and, right and i'd love to ask you also how can we steer away from meals high in carb carbohydrates and comfort food per se easier said than done in winter but um just in general trying to ensure that we are sort of getting i guess as many fruit and vegetables but i mean do you have any advice how we can try and steer away from from the carbohydrates a little bit <laughs> well, i mean carbohydrates get a, a lot of bad press and we certainly wouldn't advise against steering away but it's all about that balance so when yep. you're you know when you're looking at meal planning and when you're looking at what's on your plate you want to make sure that you know you've got basically half a plate of vegetables so yep. if you're looking at it it should be but Carbohydrates are an important element of that. So whether that's in the form of um, your starchy grains, whether that's a potato, it's really important to have the element there. And um, yeah, a lot of people kind of are very anti-carbohydrates, but um, it is important to have that balance. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with having um, a, a delicious pasta dish, but potentially, the, um, you know, as long as you're balancing that up with a salad and, and, and likewise having beautiful baked potatoes. Who doesn't love a baked potato in winter? Actually, a baked potato at any time is pretty delicious, isn't it? Absolutely. So, you know, but, it, but, the, but then it's also making sure that that is balanced on your plate with a good side of vegetables or salad too. So it's, you know, there's, you know, we, we are very aware that there are sometimes foods and, and winter vegetable gratins as well. 
um, are totally delicious, but they're not your everyday food. So it's all about that balance. It's all about everything in moderation and, and kind of knowing when to kind of um, eat a little bit more of um, one thing, a little bit less of the other. Um, and um, yeah, we definitely wouldn't advise ruling anything out. Poor, those poor old carbohydrates, they do get a lot of bad press. Yes, they? absolutely. It's about balance, definitely. Yes. And I guess not everyone is a great cook and that's okay because there's tons of inspiration out there and starting, of course, with Jamie's cookbooks and TV series, um, which we all know and love. Um, and in addition to this, I believe that the Good uh, F Foundation and Jamie's Ministry of Food um, offer an online program with cooking lessons now um, and that they can teach, um, you know, and and anyone at home um, in, in isolation, how to cook delicious and nutritious meals using Jamie Oliver's recipes. So can you tell us a little bit about this and how I guess families can access the online program? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what we um, are now delivering um, is our wonderful programs, both um, Jamie Oliver's Learn Your Fruit and Veg and Jamie's Ministry of Food um, through Zoom functionality. So um, people can go to our website, thegoodfoundation.com.au and they can have a look at what classes are available and, and then they can sign up to one of our wonderful programs. So for the kids program, um, we um, are running them sort of in the school holidays at the moment. And so um, that they're, they're running for four days in a row and um, every day um, the class lasts for half an hour and um, the kids will learn about a different seasonable fruit or vegetable and um, they'll get to make a non-heat recipe um, together. And then um, with our adult program, we um, have a number of classes online available and they run for 60 minutes and um, over a period of five weeks. So you would sign up, say at 10.30 on a Monday and you would do the same time slot every week for five weeks. And part of that, um, we take you on a, on a journey. So it's, it is a back to basics cooking program. Um, ahead of the class, we've sent out your list of ingredients, list of equipment, what you need. So you get yourself set up and we have qualified trainers who will then take you through um, those recipes for the day and you'll get to cook along with everyone else. We've actually done a class for a hundred people um, <laughs> recently, which is amazing. So for us, that's really exciting because it's got, we've now got the ability to scale. Um, so to transform more people's eating habits, which is fantastic. And um, by the end of the five week program, you will have a new repertoire of wonderful recipes. We'll teach you knife skills, kitchen skills. Um, you'll learn about different seasonal ingredients, how to shop smarter. And, um, you know, hopefully you'll have enough basic skills to empower you to make those better choices for your family too. So it's, it's a start of a cooking journey. It's not a chef's program. They are all wonderful Jamie Oliver recipes. So of course they're going to be super, super delicious. Um, but they're also very budget friendly too, because that's, um, very important as, as well during these times and um, people come along they have a great fun and you know we're creating these amazing virtual communities so we which is so important when people are you know going through social isolation people are in lockdown and um, you know by bringing people together with the power of food and cooking classes it's a really wonderful thing. Oh, Siobhan, that sounds fantastic. And we'll ensure that we have the link through to all of that in the show notes, along with the article that we've published for you, Making the Most of Winter Produce. As always, I've loved this chat um, and we've, we've covered a lot. So if you were to, I guess, summarize your key messages for anyone watching or listening, what would they be? Well, I would say make, make the most of winter produce. <laughs> Why should we make the most of winter produce? Because seasonality is exciting. We want to encourage you to eat the rainbow. We want you to get the best flavor out of those ingredients, get the most nutri nutrients out of those ingredients and expand your repertoire. Remember, some of the simplest dishes can be really exciting. So you don't need to be um, cooking anything overly complex. You know, as we've just discussed, how delicious a simple baked potato can be. Um, and, you know, those gorgeous, gorgeous soups um, that you make. And I mustn't forget that beautiful crumble. Um, and, you know, just remember that there are, it's okay to have treats. Uh, there are sometimes foods, um, but make sure you, you, you are reaching a balance in your diet. And, you know, most importantly of all, 
get yourself and your family into the kitchen. We want to empower you to make those better choices. We want to improve your cooking skills. And um, we want, as an organisation, to um, help transform the eating habits of communities across Australia. Just brilliant. Thank you so much for your time again today. And if anyone would like to get involved uh, with the foundation, um, what do they need to do and whereabouts can they find you? So if anyone would love, to, we always want to hear from people. So if anyone would like to um, speak to us about employment opportunities, um, volunteering opportunities, partnering with us as a foundation, because we're always looking for people to partner with, and whether that's from a collaboration perspective, sponsorship perspective, um, or, or other, um, please go to our website at thegoodfoundation.com.au. Um, we would love to hear from you. Also, if you would like to sign up for one of our wonderful classes, um, you know, that is where you can get all of the information about our, um, our wonderful classes. Now, we are in the process of having a new website built, which is very exciting. Very so, exciting. Um, which, so, yes. So, in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, we will be able to, people will get to experience this new, very user-friendly website. So, um, you know, hopefully, if anyone is watching this, um, by the time this goes out, we should um, have our new website um, live and um, people will get that sort of really positive customer journey. So looking forward to sort of hearing from you all and hopefully um, seeing you all on one of our wonderful courses soon. I can't wait to see the website and can't wait for our next chat, which is not too far in the future. I know I've got it in my calendar, so I can't wait. We'll take care and let's speak again soon. Stay safe. Wonderful. Thanks a lot, Rachel. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye.